Hello and welcome to the Inspiring ECE podcast. I'm your host, Marcia Nicole. And on today's topic, we are going to be talking about the importance of your story and how it is important to share your story with others, your experiences with others. And that is what we're going to talk about today. We are going to talk about my story. I want to thank you so much for coming and joining me on today's podcast. I can't wait to share my story with you. Hello, and welcome to the Inspiring ECE Podcast. I'm your host, Marcy Nicole. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast. We're about to talk about some exciting stuff on today's episode. So let's get started. Well, hello. As you already know, I am an early childhood educator, but I'm also other things. So I'm a wife of 18 years. I am a mother of three two boys and a girl, aged from 16, 12, and 6, as well as I am a huge coffee lover, and I absolutely love baseball and softball. Those are my favorite things. 80% of these podcasts will be recorded on a baseball diamond in the back of my car as I'm being the taxi or the Uber to my children. But I wanted to share with you my ECE story as it is important to share my experiences and my story with my audience. And I hope that you guys will share your experiences and stories with me. I began my early childhood field as an early childhood assistant many years ago for a private center. I've always known that I wanted to work with young children. I've always had a passion for the discovery and the learning that takes place, but also I love their curiosity. Those elements all led me to becoming an early childhood educator. I continued and graduated with my diploma many years ago now. And within that time, I've had multiple roles as an ECE, as a lead teacher, as an assistant supervisor, and then as a supervisor. Multiple roles, multiple avenues. I worked for both private I worked for the government centers and I worked for the school board as an early childhood educator. Maybe about 15 years in and after having two or three of my children, I've decided that I was going to go back to school and pursue my education. I've always loved learning, but life got in the way. And that's okay. I realized that you're never too old to do what you love. And early childhood education is my passion. I went back and did my undergrad degree. I believe my youngest was 12 months when I started. He's six now. (laughs) And that just opened up so much more learning opportunities for me. I was still in the classroom and was able to put what I was learning in theory into practice, which I absolutely loved. Then I decided to continue on and take my master's in early childhood education. And I wasn't sure if that was the route I wanted to take until I realized how much I wanted to advocate for educators. And I needed to have that education foundational background for myself to be able to pour into others. I feel like I'm put here to pour into this profession. And I hope you feel that this podcast will do that for you. I'm here to help you find and rejuvenate that passion for the field. As I was taking my master's, I was faced with a conversation by my daughter. And I want to share this story with you. She came home one day and she was always been extremely articulate with what she wants and how she's feeling. But again, one of my skills is observation. And I could see that something was a little bit off. And I asked her if she'd want to talk and she said no. And I let that go for now. A couple days went by and I could see it, that something wasn't right. And I said, okay, I think this is time we have a conversation because something's bothering you. And she literally said, words that changed my life. And they were, there are no teachers in the school that look like me. Yes, I had to pause just like you did. I didn't know how to respond to that. I didn't know what to say. She went on her way and I had to reflect on how ethnic students didn't have representation in their schools. 
just so happens I was taking my master's and doing all this research when I realized, based on research and stats, at how true that statement came from a 10-year-old. That fall, I enrolled in my Ontario certified teaching program to make a difference. So I could try to be some type of representation for future students. As I'm taking my OCT right now, and as I completed my master's, I realized my passion and drive is still in the early childhood sector and how I need to advocate and promote early childhood educators to invest in their professional development, in seeing their potential, to foster their learning so they can continue to educate our future. That's where I am today. I created Aspire to Educate to do just that. I want all educators to be seen, valued, respected, heard, and motivated to educate children. But also I want children to feel like they're represented in those classrooms, in those programs, and in those educational systems and settings. Okay, that's my story. That's where I am. That's why I'm here. This is why this podcast is here. We are going to grow and be on this journey together. I want for you to share your stories with me. So please send me an email at edu at ispire.com. Please drop me a DM on social media at ispire to educate or at Marcia Nicole underscore. I want to hear from you. I want to connect with this community. Also, I wanted to thank you for listening to today's episode. I know it was just all about me and my story, but I'm so glad that you're here and you show up every week and we're going to be on this journey together. Like I say always, the work that you do is so very important and I thank you for doing it. Until next time, take care. Bye for now. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of the Inspiring ECE Podcast. This was a blast. If you don't want to miss any future episodes, please don't forget to subscribe. Check us out on socials on Ispire to Educate. Until next time, bye for now.